Who is the biggest prankster in the Delhi Capitals team? Safras Khan. Uh, he he figured out he he's figured out a nickname for you, hasn't he? What does he call you? Namak. Namak. Yeah. Now you know too yeah. many times. Everybody calls me that now, though. Yeah. Everybody. <laughs> Are there salt endorsements coming coming up or no? Any What's endo- that? The any endorsements like a salt brand? I don't think there's no use for it, is there? <laughs> If it was Diet Coke. Uh, I'd <laughs> sign here. <laughs> but, but, but there, there are so many, so many uh, puns with with your last name that keep coming. Have have any of them caught your eye? I saw uh, salt to salt the other day. Uh, yeah. Salt adds spice to Delhi. <laughs> yeah, thing. a punch of salt. Punch. <laughs> <laughs> salt yeah. pepper sixes. Yeah, peppering boundaries. That's a favorite. That's well, a favorite. It's like every journalist who writes it thinks, oh, no one said this one before. Yeah, this is so funny. Yeah. Hi there you've tuned into the Delhi Capitals podcast uh, this is season 3 of our podcast and my name is Supreeta Das we hope you are enjoying our episodes and i'm hoping that our episode today is a very entertaining one because our guest on the podcast is Phil Salt who is super entertaining with his batting salty welcome to the show thanks very much um i want to start by asking i was just reading up a little bit on the internet this photo of yours popped up poker faced fully serious clean shaven i almost couldn't recognize <laughs> how and why did that turn into this i'm not, probably laziness is the answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't often see me with a with a clean shave anymore mm, um, i've never seen you with one it's, it's too much to maintain <laughs> it's just once a week give it a trim, trim. <laughs> we're yeah. away yeah uh, salty we're here in india of course for the ipl uh, you've you've been to india earlier but this is your first visit where you're actually playing cricket competitive cricket uh what's what's the india experience been like it's been good um there's been a lot of travel mm. i know that much i think we've had near near on 30 flights um two to go so mm. the travel's been pretty extreme I, i didn't really um you know expect it to be a bit of a challenge with the timings and whatever but the cricket's been unbelievable obviously we've had a tough competition things haven't gone quite how you know we would have wanted them to but uh, i think the you know the the size of the league has taken me back almost um you know f- from watching on tv for so long to actually playing in it now um it's huge that the support's unbelievable the following is yeah. unbelievable so it's been really cool to be a part of in that regard yeah and and you've played so much of league cricket also around the world 2022 i think was particularly busy also for you a bunch of leagues but the ipl is just something else like what were your expectations actually when you were coming in in terms of the competition and even the crowds because that's a standout always the the crowds are the standout yeah. uh, to be honest with you i mean in chennai mm. um you know you you couldn't hear anything i mean devon conway nicked one early on it was only a small nick um but there's just no way you could hear it in yeah. that atmosphere the, the, you really don't have a chance um because it is just so loud and then when doni came out to bat that was like something i've not experienced as well um it's like it's like every game's a world cup final <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But and, and what's been your Delhi Capitals experience like so far? We'll talk a little bit uh, more about it as we as we go along, but uh, overall friends you've made, uh the camaraderie in the team, what what's that been like? It's been good off the field. It's been it's been brilliant. Um, you know, obviously on the field as I said, we were hoping for better results than we've got. Um, you know, even though we do have a very good squad, but off the pitch has been as brilliant there's it's such a good group of lads you know the support staff as well um you know everybody who is involved with the franchise is so good at making it an environment that you have fun and you can relax in as a player mm-hmm. um which is quite often the hardest thing to do yeah um you know a lot of the time that's harder than actually getting the cricket right um so to be a part of that um you know my first IPL you know I actually feel quite lucky yeah um you of course became a capitals family member last year when you got into Pretoria Capitals and that was a fantastic tournament as well SA20 so as a Capitals family member we're going to just try and get to know you a little better as we as we go along so let's start a little bit from the start of your cricketing journey yeah. um which also involved uh, moving from the UK to the West Indies to Barbados if i'm not yeah. mistaken when you were very young yeah yeah take take us a little bit through that um yes yeah, so i moved there when i was i want to say around 10 
mm-hmm. um, and that was that was brilliant for my cricket. Um, you know, cricket wasn't really. I played it bits and pieces, and I, I enjoyed it. But moving there, that was a real sort of shift into playing cricket all the time and focusing on cricket for myself, which you know was obviously was obviously the right path. Um, you know, even though I didn't know it then, but that's where my sort of love for the game started. And had that move not happened, do you think football? may have been a potential career option you love it a lot i love football yeah I'll, when i'm not when i'm in my room or you know traveling i'll always have some sort of football podcast on or a football documentary or i'll be watching highlights or something like that yeah. um so football is you know my favorite sport it's a sport that i love but cricket can't be that far behind <laughs> yeah. in my own mind yeah yeah <laughs> um you know when when we look at your batting the way the way you play in some sense tailor made for t20 cricket it's just beautiful clean hitting absolutely fearless and destructive uh is that something that that was a part of your sort of you know when you were beginning to play your cricket is that what it was always from the start or something you worked on it's been a bit of a process to be honest it was hmm. i always enjoyed the game more when i was taking the game on and you know being aggressive and and you know essentially taking someone from the opposition down um you know i always enjoyed my cricket the most then um in my younger years when i was coming through the academy at sussex um i you know i had a bit of a i had a bit of a struggle with sort of coaches in particular play like this play like this no you got to and there was a lot of different outside voices um i didn't have a consistent mindset at the time but i was still you know doing well enough to be playing in the first team mm. um and then i suppose when i I had a good season in the blast and you know there was talk of England selection and all this sort of a thing and I realized that if I want to get into the the side the England side at that point in time um and, and play for them I had to play a certain brand of cricket um you know that was obvious so I suppose I, I my sort of process and train of thought took a real turn then when I realized that that's the way that's going to be most effective for me to perform and to try force away into that England side. So it's although it does come naturally to me there's a, there's a lot more um there's a lot more process and thought and you know there's been a, a lot more hard work that you don't necessarily see behind the scenes to yeah. get to get there to to tr- try and become that match winner. Mm. Um who were your cricketing idols growing up and maybe you know someone who you probably modeled your batting on a little bit? Well there's there's so many. Um there's there's so many. I mean if you look at you know everyone will say when i do stuff like this i you know obviously caribbean flair or west indian sort of influence mm. and, and that's right you know i used to watch a lot of cricket at kensington oval in barbados and you know the, the west indies had five six seven batters in every team yeah. um you know who were entertaining and went out and took the game on so i i think it would is really is a combination of everyone um yeah. you know i used to love it when touring sides had come to Barbados as well and players like Matthew Hayden had come and you know when England came when Kevin Peterson came it, it, to watch that was unbelievable that's what really sort of captured my imagination at that age mm. uh how how did keeping happen though it's it's not a very obvious choice that a lot of uh, you know youngsters pick up was it something you wanted to pursue or it just happened Uh well, it just happened at the start I kept all the way through sort of age group cricket and then when I was going through the setup at Sussex when I was maybe 15 onwards till a, till 18 or so um I wasn't really keeping I was just working on my batting mm. um that's where I was at, at that point in time and there was no scope for me to work on my keeping really uh, okay. I didn't have a lot of opportunity to do that but I knew that um keeping was always something you know that I was good at and that I wanted to pursue um even though I wasn't getting those opportunities so um no it was my agent really that rode me hard you know I'd 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 get runs and he wouldn't really care he'd be asking me about how hard I'd worked in the week leading up to the game on my keeping so it was my agent that really you know pushed me in pushed that regard you. yeah which yeah. which which was good because I'm v- I'm very grateful to him now for that and he knows that yeah um I enjoy fielding as well um but you're not in it every ball uh, with keeping and batting you've got you've got an opportunity to change every single ball of the game and for myself there's no better feeling than you know those games where you are involved in almost every ball i think it's awesome to come off the pitch and say 
you know, I've had the absolute utmost impact I, I, I could have had on this game. That's exactly. The, that is my, that's my, that's my dream, dream game. Are you being able to reach out to bowlers, fielders, though, in India when you're keeping because it is so loud? It's tough. Yeah. It's <laughs> tough getting boys' attention. I know that much because they're obviously, you know, it's loud for me. I'm in the middle. Yeah. But then if you're 70 meters away and you're right in the thick of it Correct. and you've got whistles and all sorts going on, yeah. um, you know, if it feels hectic in the middle, mm. it feels 10 times more than that on the boundary. Oof. So it is a challenge at times, you yeah. know, getting getting guys attention and because we've got Davey and he's normally at mid off it's sort of his job to sort of keep the bowlers calm yeah under those you know pressure moments um but you know you 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 try and be the best teammate you can when you're out there you try and get the angles right you try and in between overs chat to the bowlers just bowling over say what you're thinking what you think about this field um what you think about your length on this wicket how's the wicket playing you know you're always having those conversations just to it's not necessarily for me, but it's necess- just so that everybody's got a bit of clarity. Correct. I feel like those conversations are important, mm. um, you know, just to sort of really laser focus, guys. I think if you can be the best version of yourself as a teammate there, I feel like you can really help the people around you. Mm. Uh, Salty International cricket is, is so busy. There is so much of franchise cricket played throughout the year. You represented... A whole bunch of teams, I think, last year. <laughs> there was there was Abu Dhabi T10, I think, that you played in. Yep. There Pakistan was, Super League. Yeah, the, I think I went... 100. Yeah, so... SA20. <laughs> I think it was County season, then 100, then... Uh, which, which year was it? See, all the years blend into one because yeah. I never really have a break. <laughs> so, Beer for blood. Yeah, yeah, it does. But there was there was a lot of teams. There's been a lot of teams in the last two years, um, you know, which is really cool for myself. Mm. I, I sort of said a few years ago, that every opportunity I get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. And but it's tough keeping up with all of that. You're literally like, you know, country to country. Uh, how fat is the passport looking now? Yeah, the, I mean, it's not looking too fat. It's looking tired, is what it is. The front side of it's completely worn away, mm. and the back side's just full of baggage tags. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I, I don't think I'm running out of pages just yet. Yeah. But I think it is up for renewal soon. So I need yeah. to get that sorted out. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that can be really challenging because you're moving from country to country, team to team. And you're always sort of expected to perform because everyone's judged on, on what they've done on the field. But it can be tiring, not just physically, but mentally as well. How do you keep yourself balanced and be ready uh, to, you know, do your job to the best of your ability every single time you step out? Yeah, there's a lot of. There's, that is, I mean, there's so many challenges mm. in that question. Um, as you said, you need you, every place you go, you need to give the best account of yourself. Um, you know, because you're only as good as your next game. Um, it's, it's not for me. It's not you're only as good as your last game. It's only as good as your next game. So you need okay. to be as fully focused as you can be on what's coming next, and that is quite tiring. You need to have your sort of methods in place to get you away from the game more than anything else. I think that's quite an under underrated or underused skill in the game to be able to actually switch off um you know any any time essentially that you have in the hotel um whether it's you know wherever you are you need to be able to switch off otherwise it can all turn into a blur and it can all pass you by and you can end up on autopilot not giving the best version of yourself um and you know I've I've been in that spot before I think everybody who's played um around the circuit has been in that position um, but I feel like you have to be there to learn how to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, personally, it, it is tough. There's no, there's no sort of one size fits all answer. I don't Correct. think. But it's, you just need to be honest with yourself and and think more than anything. Know when enough's enough as well. Although it's good to be playing as much cricket as you can and saying, yeah, I'm improving in in this country and in these conditions. You do need to be honest with yourself every now and again. Say, you know what, this is too much. I need I need a week here. Or I need two weeks there because yeah. realistically, that's all you're ever going to get mm. if you're going to be successful. You're yeah. only ever going to get a week off or two weeks off here and there. So you need it's to be. It's a tricky one for sure. It is, yeah, it is tricky, but you, you need to. It's it's a it's an obstacle that's in everyone's way. Correct. I suppose so. You need to be able to find your way around that. How do you switch off when you have to completely? Oh, um normally it depends where you are uh, and it depends who your teammates are like, I've been very lucky 
with some really good teammates, lads you can go for dinner with and hang out with uh, that are pretty good. And you end up not talking about cricket all the time, which is a golden one for me. Um, and I like watching football. Yeah. I, don't, I don't, even if I have to go to bed a little bit later, I love what, like watching City this week at Madrid. Um, How far are they going to make it in the Champions League? They will win it. We'll win it. We got that on tape. Yeah, hung on to a 1-1 a one -one there where they scored completely against a run of play again. Yeah. But it was... Uh, we're allowed to talk about football on this. <laughs> Get this out there. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. But the last time we played them in Europe, they sort of ran away with it and we... There was just... It just wasn't right. We didn't turn up. But the way we sat behind the ball this time and, yeah. and controlled the game, when they come to our place, we'll batter them. Right. Uh, we'll just get back to the cricket and the friendships you mentioned. A rather unusual one, blossoming between an Englishman and an Aussie bloke by the name of Mitchell Marsh. On the field and off it, you guys <laughs> have hit it off and how. That, that's a pretty cool thing that's happened. Yeah, he's a legend. And um, to be fair, I, I can't even have a dip at the Aussies here because we've got so many. <laughs> so <laughs> I'd love to have a little snipe at the Aussies. But, yeah. but um, we've got so many and they're all legends. Um, so it's a bit of a tough one. Mm. But, you, you know, me and Mitch have got on really well. Um, he's a great fella. Um, very chilled out. As I, as I said when I spoke to you last, we were supposed to play together at Perth Correct. last year, but it never happened because we both got injured at the same time. But, no, it's been good. It's been good. And as, as we were talking about with getting away from the game, it's, it's so helpful to have someone like him around because we're on the same wavelength. We talk the same amount of smack. We... It's it's good fun. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of all the Aussie legends um, in in the setup, led of course by Ricky, uh, just uh, tell us what it's been like working with Panther, and also each time, you know, after the matches, uh, when you've when you've batted really well, like the match against RCB, for instance, that knock of eighty seven, how he says that, do your thing and just bat the way you are. Let nothing change that approach of yours, even if it means a couple of failures here and there. What's it been like working with Panto? It's been really good. Um, you know, coming out here, I, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't have any sort of premonitions about it. Um, but I think there's, there's one training day in particular. Normally he watches every single ball you'll hit in training. But there was one training day at our training ground here in Delhi, not at Kilakotla, the other one. And I, w I batted, I must have batted for two or three hours. Um, and I was finishing in the spin net because it had gone dark. And it, I was the last person out there with four spinners, four net bowlers. And he was stood behind me watching every ball, every single ball saying, right, now do this, now do that. And then we'd talk about it for 30 seconds. He'd say he would explain something to me and th that level of investment is not something you get from every coach um a lot of the time you know as a head coach you've got a well you need to have a much sort of broader general outlook um you know which he does really well but then the fact that he can also put the time into every single player yeah and watch almost every single ball that you hit is something that's sort of blown me away to be honest i didn't i didn't expect him to be that invested in you um so to be I've, I've loved working with him and and um Watto as well mm. watto has been awesome yeah. um yeah I played a lot of franchise cricket against him when I was just coming onto the scene um he used to hate playing against him yeah. um used to hate it because he was just always something something very aggressive with that uh, like about him mm. like he never really caused much of a fuss on the pitch but there was something he was a competitor. He was yeah. always in the battle. And uh, to be honest, I've loved hanging around with those two. Um, even when it's not talking about cricket as well. Even when we're just talking about life or another sport or something. Yeah. They're both really good fellas and I, I feel very lucky to have them yeah. here in this setup. Mm. Uh, apart from the coaches and Mitch, of course, uh, who you've become great buddies with. Uh, anyone else, you know, maybe any of the Indian guys who've been been good friends with you or you've you've had a good time hanging around with and just maybe talking and getting to know each other surprise the package. list the list is so long honestly yeah i mean ishan i played with ishan when he came over to sussex a few years ago and really he was okay. a legend then mm. legend now um paddy farhat's physio room hmm. is something to behold because everybody Can you please share stories that are worth maybe 
you know, putting on <laughs> on tape, on camera with us. Everybody, please. everybody comes through there. And yeah. all the boys try and wind Paddy up. You've got Khalil. He's always in there. Uh, Manish, he's always in there. You know, Safraz will come through. Yashdol will come through. And they're all just trying to wind Paddy up. Yeah. And Paddy just has it off of the cool deep as well. Cool deep especially. Yeah, yeah. And um, they all come in and sort of try have him off a bit and wind him up. And he just tells them to get mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> in no uncertain terms. And it's so funny because they're just backwards and forwards for half yeah, an yeah. hour, 40 minutes. It's like watching your favorite show on Netflix. <laughs> it's that entertaining. Paddy Farad is a legend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he is. It's that entertaining. Yeah. And every, oh, it's so funny. Everyone's just having a crack at each other. Yeah. It's it's honestly it's one of the better half an hours you can spend in a hotel <laughs> <laughs> nice um uh tell us a little bit about uh about the world cup and the world cup win that that is that is a huge feather in the cap for someone young and your your cricket career just just tell us what it meant and, and the entire experience of winning the world cup to be to be honest it's only sort of sinking in now really when when people say it to me um, why is that so i think it's a combination of like the gravity of the situation and how and how big it was almost um and also the fact we did, we went straight on to a 50 over series correct the next day so we mm. finished the get we must have left the change rooms at the mcg at 3 a.m mm. 4 a.m something like that and went back to the hotel and then at, i think we left the hotel the next day at midday to fly to adelaide for a 50 over series which is just so tough because yeah. we had seven games in Pakistan before the World Cup. Then we flew to Australia and then we had a three-match T20 series against Australia. Correct. And then we had a full World Cup. Like three series back to back to back Oof. all the way. It just sounds hectic just listening to it. It's unbelievable. You know, there's so much conversation about the scheduling and all that sort of stuff, international cricket. I'm very much in the mindset still where every opportunity that comes my way, I've got to take. Hmm. Um, but... Even so, that it just felt something about it felt so wrong. It, it was it was really it was really strange. Um, loved it. Like the boys were just over the moon to win the World Cup, and for a lot of guys in our squad as well, that was you know both World Cups for them. Exactly. So holding both World Cups, yeah. which is incredibly special, you know, for the guys in the group like Joss and Wokesy and all those Mo Rash, all the guys that had been a part of that success in 2019 at yeah. home. Yeah. And then going down under and, and winning a World Cup away, mm. uh, I, I can't imagine how that felt for them. And I know Morgie would have been very proud as well, um, you know, because he was a sort of bloke who got the ball rolling with the sort of whole redirection of English cricket. Mm. Um, and I know he was on commentary. I spoke to him before the final, but for him, it must have been very special. So uh, looking back on that, I, I, I don't know if you can take it all in at that, at that point in time. Because it is so incredibly special. I think it does take a long time to sink in. I, when we won it, we obviously ran on the pitch and celebrated. And then yeah. we, we were stood on the outfield at the MCG and Wonderwall came on by Oasis. And that's when I just took a moment. Oh, mm. this looked has around, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. Like, fuck. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Is there like a little flashback that happens that takes you back to your days when you started playing cricket? What, what was it like? I don't. I don't think it takes you back that far. I think it takes mm. you to the the more recent testing times. Um, I think that's where it takes you. I think it takes you back to the times when you're all in the fight together. Like you think Pakistan series, we were three two down yeah. in the seven game series, and you know we we were there. And although you know we had the World Cup coming straight after, as a group of players, we're very tight. Right. And we all said, "Listen, boys, this sets the tone for the winter. Mm. We win these next two games, and, and we win them properly." Like we go out, we play now mm. because this is going to set the tone for the rest of the winter. And we did that. That's, yeah. that's exactly what we did. So I think, I think you'd look back to those times. Or I know I do. I look back to those times where we were challenged as a group and challenged personally. And you just come out of it. You just think, yeah, that's proper. That is proper. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is a World Cup year. This one as well um, yeah. uh, to be played in India. Your thoughts on, on, on that and you want to make some early predictions maybe every every side in the world cup who's playing at home is obviously very strong yes um you know you can count up all the games that the english lads have had around the different venues in in india and then i'm sure 
you know, there'll be players in the Indian team who have more games at that venue than the rest of them put together. Together. Yeah. So, so, so the knowledge of the ground is something that is, you know, whatever venue at is going to be really, really important. Yeah. The challenge is going to be, I think, for any team that comes over here is adapting. Um, I think it'll be one of the more high scoring World Cups. I do think that um, if you look at some of the scores we've had in the IPL this year, I mean, it's been crazy. Yeah. Um, so I, I can't give out wholesale predictions at this point. I just don't know. Last four? <laughs> Try. The, what, the last four in the World Cup, the two semis. Yeah. It'll be... No pressure. Us in Australia and New Zealand and India on the other side. Okay. Set up for an England-India final. <laughs> Which cool. we which we win. <laughs> no, but I can't give predictions. <laughs> okay, okay, no, no, no problem. No. Um, going back a little bit to to the IPL experience, and I know you said that you know you're only as good as your next game, not the last one. But we yeah. have to talk about the RC game, RCB game a little bit. Yeah. Uh, when in the middle of your batting, of course, uh, there was that little spat that you had with uh, Siraj. <laughs> yeah. You're you're up for that kind that kind of stuff if. The occasion calls. Yeah, one, absolutely. Yeah. Um, look, it's a storm in a teacup, but it looked <laughs> it looked entertaining from the side. Sure. You did. know, it had it had all the there's a few fingers being pointed in people's faces and. Yeah. Davy came in. Davy came in. A little pit bull came in from the other end to yeah. back me up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it looked it looked from the outside like it was a like punches were going to get thrown and <laughs> start of a boxing match with the fingers and faces. Correct. But, <laughs> but just it wasn't like that. It's just. Yeah. The amount of times that happens in a cricket match. Um, but I do love that. I love the challenge. I love I love somebody, you know, trying to throw it down to me. Um, mm. And espe especially, the, I didn't play the first game in Bangalore, but the way that they sort of ran away with the game, you know, and there was a fair bit of carry on from them. So I, I think as a squad, we, we spoke collectively and said, right, we yeah. don't let that happen. We, we take the game to them today. And realistically, in the game, it was a perfect time to throw it back on them and say, no, don't care. Like, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll just play the game. Yeah. Now, it suddenly was one of the standout moments, your knock, um, in, in a season that's, that's been tough, which kind of brings me to the question of how, as a professional athlete uh, in this day and age, uh, do you deal with failure when, when it happens? It's, it's not easy because we're judged so easily. Social media doesn't make it easy oh. at all. We all spend a lot of time, more than we should, yeah. on it all the time. Some people choose to read comments, some don't. I don't know what your thing is. But uh, when, when the going stuff, how do you deal with it and not attach yourself maybe to an outcome so much? Yeah, well, that's the key thing there yeah. that you've said. Don't attach yourself to the outcome. Mm. Uh, attach yourself to the process. So attach yourself to being very specific and clear with what you're working on in training, what you think is going to, you know, if, if I go to training tonight, I'm, I'm working on something very specific that I think that my game might need a little tune up here or there. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe I'll look at the opposition. Maybe they'll have a certain type of bowler that I want to face. Um, dealing with failure is a part of cricket and it's always the way that there's there's always someone ready to pounce on you and say something whether it's you know it could be someone in your own dressing room or it could be someone in the stand or it could be someone in the commentary box there's always someone looking to pounce on something and jump on it and almost make a headline for themselves yeah um which is pretty strange cricket's a game where you're going to fail more than you succeed and you have to understand that early on um you know i've i've got no real time for social media um to be honest i don't have it downloaded on my phone or anything like that um you know i get it out as and when i need to if i need a sponsor doing something or <laughs> put something on there i'll literally download it for five minutes put something up and then disappear because th mm. there's no mileage in reading the stuff because there's always there's always an idiot yeah. with an opinion that's the, true. the world's full of them. If you know, if I but if I walk down in the hotel lobby now and some bloke said, "Hey, so should have got more runs against this team," I wouldn't listen to them there. Correct. So why would I listen to them just because they've? It's wrote on the a internet comment. and validate yeah. them. I I just think that if you're really there, commenting on what other people are doing in their lives, yeah, yours can't be that interesting. Yeah. That's the <laughs> that's the bottom line for me, and that's, that's why I've got no. 
I've got no real interest in it. Like, yeah. good luck to them. Say what you want, but I it's... love that response. I love that that approach. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to apply a little bit, <laughs> yeah. bit of it. <laughs> um, just looking a little bit ahead, um, Salty. What would you say your your cricketing goals are? Short term and long term, of course. Um, I, I know Test cricket is something that you obviously want to play and yeah. excel in as well. I think my short term goals are win a trophy with Lancashire. Um, I'd love to do that because um, they're similar to here. They're a great set of lads. The, the dressing room is unbelievable there. Um, so I think that'd be really special after all the hard work the boys have put in. Um, same goes for the 100. I, I just want to win things. I made, a, I made a fairly big decision to you know, move away from the club that I came through um, and move to Lancashire, which okay. was almost like a move home in some, in, in some way. It's all about trophies for me now. Um, that, that's what I want to do. I want to finish with a handful of trophies yeah. for Lancashire. Um, you know, they've put a lot of faith in me, so I'd say my short-term goal is to, is to get back and do that. And long-term? Long term, more trophies. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, loads of trophies. <laughs> <laughs> Short term, like few. Long term, heaps. Small trophies, big trophies. <laughs> yeah, medium matter. trophies. Doesn't yep. matter. Um, long term, I don't know. I I tend not to set long term goals because you, yeah. you don't know what's gonna happen. Um, you know, my winter was my winter proved that to me. The last ODI against Australia, um, dislocated my shoulder, AC joint, and then I was out for best bit of a month and a half yeah almost two months uh, you know South Africa was almost a doubt for me and that whole time I was supposed to be playing T10 and then back to Australia for Big Bash correct so I think in this game I think as soon as you take your eye off the ball what you do in this current moment and you start looking too far ahead that's when I feel like there's a potential for a banana skin mm. so I, I try not to I, I really try not to tempt fate yeah Nice. Um, I do wish many, many trophies to you, um, Salty. Before we close this one, we've got a quick uh, T20 rapid fire round. So we'll see how this one goes. Okay. Who is the biggest prankster in the Delhi Capitals team? Safras Khan. Uh, he, he figured out, he, he's figured out a nickname for you, hasn't he? What does he call you? Namak. Now, yeah. now you know too yeah. many times everybody calls me that now though yeah everybody <laughs> are there salt endorsements coming coming up or no any, endo that the any endorsements like a salt brand i don't think there's no use for it is there <laughs> if it was diet coke uh, i'd <laughs> <laughs> sign here <laughs> but, but, but there, there are so many so many uh puns with with your last name that keep coming have, have any of them caught your eye i saw uh, salt assault the other day uh, yeah. salt adds spice to delhi <laughs> yeah. a punch of salt punch <laughs> <laughs> salt yeah. pepper sixes yeah peppering the boundaries that's a favorite that's well, I, it's like every journalist who writes it thinks oh no one said this one before yeah this is so funny yeah original <laughs> each time okay uh who in the dc team has the best taste in music this is a tie mm. yash Dool and ishan who has the most questionable taste in music? Please be 100% honest. Oh, I've heard, I've, I've heard some <laughs> bad songs. Who would it be? Uh, Abhishek Perel. <laughs> I was sat on my bed the other night yeah. and I opened Spotify and um, it was like, Abhishek Perel is listening on JBL speaker. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to join session? So I clicked join yes. session and it was uh, a soundtrack to a, a romance film, like a love, like a love story. <laughs> <laughs> so he said it was like soundtrack to love story such and such <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll check with him we'll check with yeah. him okay cool who is the best dancer in the team Safraz Khan okay uh, your best buddy I think this is such an easy one yeah Bison Bison it is who is the most disciplined member of the team oh um, it would have to be one of the South African boys Lungi Lungi and Gidi I think he's you know he's not necessarily had the easiest time of out here, but he's worked so hard. Yeah, um, he's been so good with what he's done in the gym, and he always tears in at training. Yeah, yeah, agree. Okay, one word to describe uh, Indian crowds. Crazy. One word to describe the T Twenty World Cup win. Unbelievable. What is your favorite cheat meal? Sounds really bad to say. The f probably on the way back home, if I stop in Dubai, I'll I'll get a McDonald's there, hmm. or when I land at the airport, I'll 
I'll hit the drive through. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. That's, yeah. Okay. Once in a while. Yeah. Why not? Totally. Uh, okay. If you could eat one food, uh, you have the choice to eat only one food item for the rest of your life. What would that be? It needs to be, does it have to be like a sensible answer? Because you can live, no. off, you can live off chickpeas, can't you? Or McDonald's. That's like a thing. That's like a, no, not McDonald's. I mean, the size of a house. Uh, Riley Russo said bread. So yeah, sure. I'll take chickpeas. Bread. Yeah, bread. He, uh, so I'll take chickpeas. Actually, no you know, dal, bu- dal bakara. Dal bakara, which yeah. was my next question. The best Indian food you've had. Dal bakara. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. And apart from the dal bakara, what other Indian words have you picked up? Oh, we can't, can't, no. can't, we can't say them on None air. None of them? We can't say them on air. Okay, so then let me no. just, let me just uh, <laughs> teach you one acceptable one as yep. we um, close this one. Dhanyavad Dilli. One more time. Dhanyavad. Try. Dhanyavad. Dhanyavad is thank you. So, Dhanyavad. Yeah. Delhi. Dhanyavad Dilli. Lovely. And Dhanyavad, Phil, so all for your time. (laughs) Thank you so much. I wish you many, many trophies, lots of runs. Please be cool and play the way the way you always do. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers.